Hello, welcome to lesson two. All right, for our self-balancing robot, we're in the motor control module and we're going to see what we need to do in Arduino to actually get our motor spinning. All right, so in the kit we're using, right, our robot has a dual motor driver integrated chip called the TB6612FNG. All right, we're going to use two input signals. Uh, it calls in one and in two to use one of to choose one of four modes, do we want to spin the motors clockwise, counterclockwise, short braking, or stopping the motors? I've included then the PDF document as well, the data sheet in this directory. All right. And I've also included below a table then trying to tell you what the pin numbers are. All right. So these are the pin numbers. When you look at the data sheet, the data sheet will refer to these pin names. All right. When you look at the printed circuit board, then you want to see then how these these names on this driver are broken out to these names on the Elegoo printed circuit board. Right? And then if you look at the headers along the side of the printed circuit board, you'll see these pin names and then you'll see the Arduino pin numbers next to them. Right? So if we're referring to this name, this is the Arduino pin number that it's connected to. Right. And so we want to write an Arduino sketch to just simply turn the motors forward, backward, and make them stop. Right. Uh, below is an image from the data sheet, the control functions of the data sheet, and I use this to try and determine how we write the Arduino functions. Basically, one of the pins we can see here is a standby pin. You'll notice in all of these modes, standby is high, so short break, counterclockwise, uh, there's a counterclockwise short break and there's a clockwise short break right, and a stop mode. Right, so you have to set that standby pin to high to be in any of these modes. If the standby pin is in low, your, is in low, your motors are just plain in standby and they're not going to be able to turn. All right. All right. So low level motor control on the Arduino. Right, what I did was I just went ahead and defined then these names that you see on the printed circuit board and put the Arduino pin number next to that. I made a file called pin.h, uh, similar to what Elegoo does in their programs that they supply with a robot. Right. It looks like, uh, so A here I'm referring to as the left motor, B as the right motor. It all depends, left and right depends on how your robot's oriented and how you're facing it. So when you implement this, you'll have to decide whether you want to call things A or B, left or right, whatever works for you. All right, so these, like I said, these pins are defined out in a header file called pin.h in an Arduino sketch. And here, let me, something like this. So in an Arduino sketch called listen2, I just simply made a header file called pins.h showing just what was shown there in the readme, right? All right, so we wanna go ahead and initialize the motors, right? You wanna put them into some sort of known state and you have to then set all of these pins to output because these are all pins that the Arduino will write to. So on the Arduino side, we need to set all of these pins to an, app, to an output mode. And then I call the stop motors function just because when I initialize the robot, right, the motors, I don't want them spinning. So I just call the stop motors function just to make sure that they are in a stop mode. In case maybe you reinitialize things from a running mode. All right, drive forward is a function that I define and drive forward, right? Both wheels should be spinning in the same direction. We use PWM to control then the DC motors. That's an analog right. And in this case, drive forward function just receives some sort of parameter here. I call it speed. Well, that parameter has to be within the range of values that analog right can write. So this function assumes that you have sent it a set of values that are in range. It then writes then right to A. So this is A in one. It sets that low and it sets B in one low. All right, and back in the control chart, right, so if you set the in one pin low, you're going to get a counterclockwise motion with a high, with standby high, and with a PWN signal high. 
Now we are not writing to input two. If you look at the driver documentation, there is an input two pin, but that is not broken out for our use on this printed circuit board. And so I found I, just by writing this like this, so I'm setting these low, that this will actually turn the motors. Like I said, I assume that both motors, the mo robot's going to drive forward. Motors aren't always matched, so the robot might not drive perfectly forward. It might turn a little bit, but just for a very simple function called forward, I'm going to send them the same speed. Eventually, we will improve our motor control to the point where we'll be able to read some feedback, some encoder feedback off the motors and perhaps uh, control driving straight a little bit better than this. All right. Drive backwards then, well, that I just want the motors to spin in the opposite direction. So here, if I put them in the low state, here, I just went ahead and put them in the high state. All right. Set them to the same speed. They're spinning in the opposite direction, so that should be backward. Stop then. We'll stop then. I just write a low to both pins. All right. A low is also a zero. So you could do here where one is high, so you could write high or low in the Arduino world. All right, standby is high as well too to stop the motors. All right, and then I just send a speed or a duty cycle right, of 0% to the motors as well to stop that. And so if I'll pop up the lesson two sketch, but I made a header file with these functions in here. All right, then the CPP file where the functions are actually then defined, here they're declared, here they're defined, right? You have this code in the repository. And then all then the main file does here, the main function is, right? I just wanted to set this to a fairly low motor speed. And I'm going to print out messages to the serial port, right? We'll initialize the motors, it'll print out messages, the motors are initialized, it'll tell the motors to drive forward. We'll delay for three seconds, then we'll spin the backwards, delay for three seconds, we'll stop the motors, print out a message that the motors are stopped, that's the end of the demo, and it just goes into this infinite while loop that doesn't do anything. Right, so that's just a really simple way to test if your functions are working. And of course, when I tested this, I'm holding my robot or my motors off the ground so the wheels aren't on the ground because I don't have any other sort of control for the robot to keep it upright. So I just wanna hold that off the ground. Make sure when you run this sketch as well, that you're not just running off of USB power on your Arduino. Go ahead and turn the battery on because the motors are going to want more voltage. Uh, they may run at a very low speed with that USB power. Go ahead and turn your battery on as well. Right. And so that should have your motors running forward and backward. Now, you might wanna change my definition of forward and backward on your robot, but this should make that work. And so that's it for lesson two, finally something fairly simple that we could do.